So where do we even start with Sheffield United? Two league wins all season and rooted to the bottom of the Premier League. Sold the two best players in the summer in Sander Berger and Illiman and Jai. Sacked manager Paul Heckingbottom and replaced him with Chris Wilder for his second spell at the club. However, since Wilder left the club, he has really, really struggled. It seems a certainty that the Blades will be relegated to the Championship next season. So today, we are going to save Sheffield United and win them a UCL trophy in FC24. However, today there is a slight twist. We can only sign three agents in this rebuild. Let's get this Sheffield United rebuild on the way. So this is the Sheffield United team we've loaded in and honestly I can see why this squad is bottom of the Premier League this is nowhere near a Premier League level squad however we do have some decent players like Ahmed Hodzic Souza and Gustavo Harma but there are some bright sparks of the Sheffield United team but lads on paper there's no chance that team stays up now usually in these rebuilds the first summer transfer window is normally disabled however you can sign free agents out of the allotted transfer window so we can actually make improvements to the squad right now and I'm going to go into the free agent market and look for a new centre back to replace Robinson and a new centre midfielder to replace Norwood as they're both aging and not good enough for the Premier League. Now before we get into the transfers we need to sort out the tactical vision and given the squad we've got and we're playing five at the back we're going to go with the counter-attacking tactical vision. We're going to soak up pressure and try to hit teams on the break. So kicking off our transfer business lads and we are starting the Sheffield United Mexican Revolution as we are bringing in two free agents who should be absolute stalwarts in any free agent only rebuild. The first being Luis Chavez a centre midfielder, 27 year old. He's an excellent pickup. And the next being Israel Reyes a 23 year old centre back who's an excellent pickup as well. We're bringing both of these guys into Sheffield United and Luis Chavez is the first player through the door of the Sheffield United rebuild and he joins the club at 79 rated 17 million player value he is instantly the best player at the club and Chavez is swiftly followed by Israel Reyes who becomes the second edition of the rebuild he's 23 years old and 75 rated and is instantly our best centre back as well now after the incomings of Reyes and Chavez the team is definitely looking a little bit more competitive and after sorting the transfers we're going to have a look at the actual squad of players we've actually got and a lot of the team are actually under 25 meaning we've got a lot of room to develop these players and only a handful of the squad are actually over 30 so we've actually inherited a pretty decent squad that has got a lot of room to grow and one of the focuses of season one is getting all these youngsters out on loan so we've started out the starting 11 and formation the tactical vision and we've brought in some new players all that's left to do now is simulate 4 to January the 1st and see how Sheffield United are getting on in season one and hopefully we're outside of the relegation zone. So we've arrived at January the 1st and we're actually 13th in the Premier League so we're not in the relegation zone but very bizarrely lads we've actually drawn 10 games this season but we are joint lowest scorers in the Premier League with only 18 goals so that is something we have to address next season and hopefully now kicking on to the end of the season we can actually stay in the division. Now the only business we're going to be doing in this January transfer window is renewing all of these deals that are expiring at the end of the season other than that lads that is us done. Unfortunately there's going to be no excitement in January we're simulating straight through the end of the season and hopefully we have stayed in the Premier League. They've reached the end of the season lads and we did secure Premier League survival finishing in 15th place on 38 points, 10 points clear of 18th place Burnley. So Sheffield United will be playing Premier League football next season. And lads I really don't know how but we've actually won the FA Cup in season 1 beating Newcastle 2-1 in the final. We didn't even have an easy run because we knocked out Arsenal in the 6th round and Liverpool in the 5th round. So somehow in season 1 we've won the FA Cup. Some rebuilds from a full 90 rated players would not even win it. Now let's take a look at our FA Cup winning side and it blows my mind to think this team has actually won the FA Cup with one player who's over 80 rated in the entire squad. So going into season two, we definitely need to bring in the new striker to replace Bereton Diaz as he's going back to Villarreal. And we also need to bring in a goalkeeper as Fodderingham is 75 rated and 33 years old. Now in terms of stats, we really did struggle for goals this season. Cameron Archer was our top scorer getting 11 goals in 32 games. Ben Bereton Diaz got 10 in 40 and Ollie McBurney got 8 in 24 so a decent return from McBurney and after that lads we really did struggle to score goals throughout the rest of the squad which is something we might have to address in Season 2 we're now simulating into Season 2 and I'm hoping we can build on a 15th place finish and somehow top winning the FA Cup and lads because we won the FA Cup we're actually in the Europa League this season but the board only wants us through to group stages thankfully because our squad is just not ready for a 60 game season no we definitely need a striker and a goalkeeper in this window no the thing is we're Free agents, you can be scouting them for 18 days and someone will just swoop in and sign them under your nose. I cannot allow that to happen this season. I need to get my main targets in straight away. So we might have to not fully scout some of the players, which could in turn be a bit of a risk. Now, worryingly lads, the free agents list has really not been kind to us this season. The goalkeepers and strikers on offer are not very good at all, but we have actually found a really decent centre-back called Jesus Anguello, another Mexican player. He's actually been approached by 
Newcastle United and he looks like he's got really good stats and he is a player we want to bring to Sheffield United and we have swooped in under Newcastle United's noses and we have secured the services of Jesus Anguello for the next four seasons and he looks like a really solid pickup lads 76 rated 26 year old 8 million pound player value and he should be a very very good centre back for us now we have actually managed to find a striker lads and it's Maximiliano Salas a 73 rated 26 year old Argentinian striker admittedly he's definitely not the best option but he's the only real quality option there is on the free agents list this season he's got okay stats and looks like an okay player definitely a championship player mind but we're going to bring him to Sheffield United as he is the best striker currently available on the free agents list and we have secured the services of Salas for the next four seasons however we have actually managed to find a really really well-rounded right wing back in Robert Scov his stats look really really good I don't want to risk scouting him and him getting snapped up by someone else so we're going to bring him straight to Sheffield United and we have secured the services of Robert Scov for the next three seasons and he actually looks really really decent lads 75 rated really really well-rounded stats he'll be a decent squad player for this season this will be the squad that does take us into season two and honestly it does look like it's going to be another relegation battle and I'm just hoping we've got enough this season to actually stay in the division again but it is going to be a big ass lads so we kicked the season off with the community shield which we did lose 3-2 to Manchester City but we did give a very good account of ourselves lads pushing City all the way at Wembley and hopefully this can transfer into our league form and push us up the league table now we did have quite a few outgoings to get through lads which I'm going to run you through right now Tom Davis left for Brighton for 5.7 million Jack Robertson left for Fortuna Sittard for 1.7 million youngster Antoine Hackford joined Bristol City on loan Harry Boys left for CFR Kludge for 970k Benny Traore joined Stad Rene on loan for the season and finally Ben Osborne joined Caddis for 2.1 million bringing a close to our transfer window and finally our Europa League group is in lads we are in group A and we've got a very difficult group we've got Lille Valadid and Shelbourne hopefully we give a good account of ourselves but I am fully expecting us to go out of this competition let's simulate 4 to January the 1st and see how we're getting on so we've arrived at January the 1st boys and usually now I'd be showing you the league table but we've actually managed to find a goalkeeper on the free agents list in Ivan Villa he's a 76 rated 27 year old Spanish goalkeeper with really well rounded stats and he has got plenty of room to grow and we are going to bring him to Sheffield United at the start of January and we have secured the services of Ivan Villa for the next three seasons now let's check the league table shall we we're sitting 12th in the league on 23 points once again drawing the majority of our games we have actually increased our goal output and we're actually in positive goal defence which is really really encouraging but we are only 5 points off the relegation zone so we have to keep form good otherwise we will be playing in the championship next season now as you know we actually qualified for the Europa League this season after our shock FA Cup win and we somehow managed to get through our group boys on 10 points finishing in 2nd place meaning we're in the preliminary round of the competition but we will play AS Monaco in the next round meaning lads that's probably the end of our journey in the Europa League but you never know lads so we won the FA Cup last season who's saying we can't win the Europa League this season and we've also got an absolute wonder kid in our academy Frankie Brooks 67 rated 18 year old centre back with 84 to 94 potential he is getting promoted straight to the senior team and we're going to send him out on loan for the rest of the season so we've reached transfer deadline day and there has been some movement out of the club Max Law has joined Villarreal for 3.8 million Wes Fodringham has joined Real Betis for 2.1 million and we managed to get out our wonder kid Frankie Brooks to AZ Altmaier for the rest of the season on a short term loan and that's the end of our transfer window lads we're now simulating forward to the end of the season and let's see how we got on in the Europa League and where we're finishing the Premier League so we've arrived at the end of the season 2 and we actually had a really really solid season finishing in 11th place on 46 points just 4 points off the top half finish and we were a whopping 13 points off relegated Leicester City meaning we're still in the Premier League and hopefully the free agents list is kind to us and we can kick on next season and ultimately we did not manage to retain our FA Cup crown but we did actually make the semi-finals where we lost to Liverpool so I have to say very good account of ourselves in the FA Cup once again and we didn't make the final of the Europa League it was actually Monaco who got to the final meaning you do know now that they knocked us out in the preliminary round and they battered us 5-2 over two legs which was fully expected to be fair now looking at the squad it's very refreshing to see multiple players over 80 rated Reyes, Ahmed Hodzic, Souza and Chavez all a over 80 rated so going into next season I'm not going to predict the positions that we're going to improve because you just cannot predict what the free agents are still throw at you but I would like a new left wing back and a striker but let's just see who's available now in terms of stats Cameron Archer was absolutely outstanding this season getting 22 goals and 3 assists in 49 games Maximiliano Salas turned out to be a quite handy addition getting 17 goals and 10 assists and from left wing back Robert Skov got 15 goals and 8 assists that is a crazy return then Luis Chavez also reached double figures this season getting 10 goals altogether so all in all lads I'm really really impressed with the output of the squad this season and hopefully next season we can get the right additions in the free agents list is kind to us and we can push into the top half of the Premier League
league. So we've arrived in season three and we would have had 67 million pounds to improve our squad. We could have done so much with that money, boys, but it's no time to get to work scouting through the free agents and see who we can bring in to improve the actual starting 11. So for our first signing of the summer, boys, we've actually identified a player who's been very much under the radar at Manchester United, Donny van der Beek. His time at Manchester United was an absolute nightmare. He never really got going. And at 78 rated and 28 year old, I think he looks like quite a good player on paper and we're going to bring him to Sheffield United where he's going to try and reignite his career. And we have secured the services of Donny van der Beek for the next three seasons. And for our second signing of the summer, we've actually brought in a very young and exciting striker who's only 22 years old and he looks like a very, very shrewd pickle. We have brought in Dorgales Nene on a five-year deal. Now, Nene is 22 years old and 72 rated, meaning he isn't ready right now for first-team football. But I do feel like after we're going out on loan this season, he'll be a really good addition to our squad. Now, for our third signing of the summer, boys, we've actually identified a player who's a world Cup winner. Mario Gotza is available on a free contract. He's 81 rated and 33 year old. He's got very decent stats, although he will be on the decline this season. We are going to bring him to Sheffield United and he will give us the boost we need at the top of the pitch. And we have acquired the services of Mario Gotza for the next two seasons. No boys, we're actually going to have a bit of an overhaul of our striker positions as we've identified Sebastian Esposito, who's a 74 rated 23 year old Italian striker who looks really, really well rounded. We're going to bring him to Sheffield United and we're going to sell Ollie McBurney and Rian Brewster. We have secured Esposito's services for the next five seasons. So we've arrived at the end of the transfer window and there are some outgoings to get you through. The first being Gustavo Harmer, who's joined Lazio for 9.8 million. Austin Trusty joined RC Lens for 7.1 million. Oli McBurney joined Getafe for 4.5 million. Antoine Hackford joined the New York Red Bulls for 1.2 million. Maximiliano Salas returned to his home country, joining River Plate for 8 million. Rian Brewster joined Porto for 3 million. Bringing our transfer window to a close, lads, we're now simulating forward to January the 1st and hopefully we're at least in the top half. So we've arrived at January the 1st and we're having an absolutely excellent start to season 3 as we're currently sat 7th in the Premier League table on 31 points only 3 points off a Champions League spot lads we've already achieved miracles in this rebuild can we achieve another one this season so we've reached transfer deadline day lads and there has been some outgoings to run you through Andre Brooks will spend the rest of the season on loan at Ferrell Palazzo William Asula has joined Racco for £2 million Dorgalese Nene has gone out on loan to Braga for the rest of the season and our wonder kid Frankie Brooks has also joined Villarreal on loan to the end of the season. That's our transfer window done, lads. We're now simulating forward to the end of the season, and given the fact we're in such a good position in the league, I would be absolutely buzzing if we snuck into at least a Conference League spot. So we've arrived at the end of the season, lads, and wow, what a season we did have. We finished 6th in the Premier League on 59 points, just 11 points behind Liverpool, but there is a massive, massive gap between the top 5 and the rest of the division. So hopefully next season, with the right incomings, we can close that gap to the top 5. We didn't manage to make the FA Cup final, lads. We didn't actually do that well in the FA Cup this year. We got to round 5 we were beating by Newcastle United 3-1. Now looking at the team lads, it's looking much, much stronger than it did at the start of last season. Only four players in the starting 11 are now below 80 rated, which is really, really good going. Again lads, I'm not going to guarantee where I'm going to improve the squad next season because you just have to deal with what the free agents throw at you. But I would like a new set of midfielder as got so is 34 year old. And I'd like a centre back as well to replace Angulo, but that is dependent on what is available to us at the end of the season. We also promoted an absolutely unbelievable looking young goalkeeper who's 6 16 years old, 68 rated and has potential to be special. He'll be going out on loan next season and hopefully when he comes back, he'll be ready for a spot in the first team. In terms of stats, our best player this season was Cameron Archer getting 21 goals and 6 assists, growing to 81 rated. Sebastian Esposito had a brilliant first season in English football, getting 20 goals and 11 assists. That is an outstanding return. Now, hopefully, lads, next season, I'm still not expecting much with the squad we have, but I'd really like to close that gap to the top five. So we've arrived in season four, lads, and it's safe to say the free agents list has served us up an unbelievable player and once again it's a World Cup winner. We are going to be signing Rodrigo De Paul, a 32 year old, 84 rated World Cup winning central midfielder with amazing stats, not a single one on the 75 and we are definitely bringing him to Sheffield United and we have secured the services of Rodrigo De Paul for the next two seasons. Now boys this transfer window just gets better and better because I've found two very high potential youngsters on the free agents list who are actually good enough to go into their first team. I don't need to fully scout them because I've seen them on previous rebuilds when I've been scouting through players and the players are Luca Nets and Kayo Jorge. We are going to bring both players to Sheffield United. Luca Nets is the first to join and he joins us on a four-year deal. Now he's 79 rated and seven years younger than Skov. This is a massive improvement and I'm hoping he'll be our end game left wing back. And Kayo Jorge is next to join and he joins us on a four-year contract. He's 78 rated and 24 year old. He's instantly our second best striker and I know he has better potential in game than Esposito. So we've reached the end of the transfer window and there are some outgoings to bring you up to date with. Donny van der Beek has left the club for Real Sociedad.
Chelsea dad for 12 million pounds. Dorgales Nene has joined Burnley for 4.8 million. Reese Norrington Davis has joined Ghent for 2.9 million. Benny Traore has joined Osasuna for 7 million. Anis Silman has left the club on loan to go to Ghent, and that will bring a close our transfer window. I think looking at the squad, they've got a very, very good squad on paper with every single player at the end of the season will be over 80 rated, which is really, really good. And I'm thinking with a squad as good as this, would we sneak into European football because we were very close last season? Let's simulate for to January the 1st and see how we're getting on. So we've arrived at January the 1st, lads, and we're currently sitting 9th in the Premier League on 35 points, only losing 4 of our opening 21 games, so it's safe to say we've made a very, very solid start to our Premier League season. We do currently sit 6 points off a Champions League place and 5 points off a European place. So there's a very good chance that we could be playing European football next season. We just need to keep up this good form. And if we look to the starting 11, lads, every single player is now over 80 rated. I think it's safe to say we have built a very, very good squad here with just free agents and none of them regens as well. So we've arrived at the end of the season, boys, and we have clinched Champions League football, finishing in fourth position, beating Manchester City to the top four by just one point. And we're only five points off tabletop in Chelsea. The progression we've made at Sheffield United using only three agents is absolutely crazy. Now, unfortunately, we did not make the FA Cup final. And to be honest with you, lads, I think we got knocked out quite early in the fifth round again by Chelsea 2-0. Jesus, we always lose in the fifth round. So this is the team that has got us Champions League football and it's easy to see why this team is starting to take serious shape. Players like Reyes, Souza and Chavez being the standouts. Going into next season, lads, I would like to bring in at least a new centre-back, but I know what the free agents list is like. I'm literally just going to get what I'm given. And the stats have reset, lads, so we're never going to see who are our top performers of this season, unfortunately. But we will let you know that Mario Gotso will be leaving the club at the end of the season as his contract has expired. He's been a very good servant for us, but it's time for him to move on. So let's get into season five and our first season in the Champions League and see how we get on. So we've arrived in season five and it's time to work on getting some players through the door. We've made our first signing of the summer, boys, and it's not going to be a first team starter, but it is a very, very decent pickup in the centre midfield position. We have brought in Ben Atorrientes on a four year deal. He's 25 year old and 78 rated lads, and is a decent little pickup in the centre midfield position. And we've also also found this man Raheem Sterling on the free agents list is 82 rated and 32 year old and I'm actually going to bring him to Sheffield United for a few seasons and hopefully retrain him to a left wing back and we have secured the services of Raheem Sterling for the next two seasons now unfortunately lads after the signings of Torrientes and Sterling I'm really really struggling to find anyone else to bring into the football club so as of right now we're probably stuck with what we have I will keep my eye out and hopefully someone does crop up on the free agents list but I'm I'm not holding my breath at all, boys. They've reached the end of the transfer window, lads, and unfortunately, I could not find anyone to bring into the football club. Therefore, we've made no sales in this window. And one thing we have focused on this summer is coach management. We have absolutely stacked our squad with the best coaches from around the world to give us the best possible chances of winning games. And hopefully, that helps us on the pitch this season. And our first Champions League group of the rebuild is in, lads, and we've got Real Madrid, Benfica, and Genk. I do think we've got a really good chance of progressing here, lads. So let's simulate forward to January the 1st and see if we did. So we've arrived at January the 1st. First and feast your eyes on this, boys. We are top of the Premier League on 39 points, level on points in Manchester United. It is extremely tight between first and seventh place. We're just seven points separate in the top seven, so we've got to maintain our form in the second half of the season. And we also managed to get through our Champions League group, lads, finishing on 12 points, losing two of our six games. And we will take on and we will take on AC Milan in the round of 16, which I actually think is a very winnable tie. So once again, we're going to be close for business in this transfer window, boys, basically because. If we let someone go, we just cannot replace them. So we're going to be simulating straight through to the end of the season and let's see how we got on in the Champions League and if we actually managed to win the Premier League. Now, lads, I've had to bring you back early because we are literally one simulation away from the Champions League final somehow. We take a 3-2 lead back to Bramall Lane against Atalanta and if we win this tie or even draw this tie, we are into the Champions League final. Lads! Oh my god, we have beaten Atalanta 2-1, Archer and Nets with the goals, and we're somehow in a Champions League final in Season 5. Now, the season's not actually over. As you can see, we're going to be playing Napoli, who beat PSG 6-5 over two legs. Now, the season isn't actually over yet, but I'm going to run you through. In the group stages, we smashed AC Milan 4-2 over two legs. Then we very narrowly beat Celtic 4-3 over two legs. Then Atalanta 5-3 over two legs. To be fair, we've had AC Milan, Celtic and Atalanta. That is a pretty favourable draw towards the final. Then we've got Napoli in the final. Wow, Lady Luck has definitely shined on our side. Now, I'm taking absolutely nothing away from that squad. There's some absolutely world-class players in there like Souza, Chavez and Reyes. In previous rebuilds, it's taken us a bit more than this to actually get to a final, but I'm not complaining. Let's get forward to the end of the season, see how we got in the Premier League 
and take on the Champions League final. So we've arrived at the end of the season and we secured a third place finish in the Premier League on 76 points, three points off eventual winners Manchester City. So we've not only performed in the Champions League, we've definitely performed well in the Premier League as well and we scored 83 goals this season, which is massively impressive. But we've been hit with a major setback. Reyes, our 87 rated centre-back, our actual best player, is suspended for the final and look at his stats, 94 pace, 88 defending, 89 physical. He would have been such a good addition to the squad for the final, but instead Angulo will have to take his place. Now in terms of stats, Kayo George and Cameron Archer had amazing seasons getting 34 goals each. Rodrigo De Paul's chipped in with 14. Then after that, lads, not many players actually managed to score too many goals. So it's very clear to see that our strikers have carried us this season. Can they carry us one final time though in the Champions League final? So it's time for the Champions League final, boys. Sheffield United versus Napoli at the Estadio de Benfica. And let's just get this job done. Obviously, we just our luck, won it? To lose Reyes, our best defender and best player literally at the final oh what a ball nets square it Archer getting the 1-0 in the Champions League final Cameron Archer makes it 1-0 to Sheffield United and that was a lovely team move really nice passing play on the wing to play nets in who smashes it across the box and there is Cameron Archer on the penalty spot keeper probably should save it but we don't care it's 1-0 to Sheffield United oh no Oshiman, oh, Villa with a save. Admittedly, lads, he did P roll that, then he probably should have put a bit more power on it. Ref, that's a good pace by Nets. We've got 4v3 here. We've got an overload of men. Oh, they've got in each other's way, the f idiots. What were they doing? That's a foul on Oshiman from Ahmed Hodzic. Karavich Skellia, he does scare me, I can't lie. And Ahmed Hodzic, that's brilliant defending. And that's half time, lads. We're 1 0 up. There's been a game of very few chances. The five at the back is doing its job. And we're 45 minutes away from lifting the Champions League trophy with Sheffield United. Women see not all, Mike. Don't let Oshman have a shot. No. Nope. Good save by Villa. And Gulo up to Kai George. And Archer can be in. That's brilliant play. Come on, Archer. Win the game. See you late. Uh, oh uh. my god, what a save. Chavez. <gasps> Archer again. <laughs> Cameron Archer, he makes it 2 0 in the Champions League final. Um, our only two chances of the game have resulted in two goals. Chavez does so well here, keeps the ball in play, a beautiful cross across the box, and a volley facing away from goal from Archer makes it 2 0 to Sheffield United. Not that I'm Scott. Denied. What a block. Oh my god. Good save by Villa, get it out. Shh, don't let him score. Oh, that's penalty. Oh, it don't matter, it's game over. That were a clear penalty that he's not give. How much luck are we going to get in this video? Napoli should have had a clear penalty there at the end, and it's not been given. It won't have mattered anyway. We've won the Champions League with Sheffield United. Admit the lads, Lady Luck has definitely smiled on us this season. And all that's left to do is watch Sheffield United lift the Champions League trophy with a squad of three agents and one Youth Academy player. And it'll be Luis Chavez, our first sign of the rebuild, who will lift the trophy. And that is another rebuild smashed off. Sheffield United are the champions of Europe. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching the video. I'm going to say it again. Lady Luck has smiled on us in this rebuild. Just looking at the rounds. Milan, which is a difficult tie to be fair. Celtic, very favourable. Atalanta, very favourable. And then Napoli in the final. I'm making the most of that because I probably won't get a run like that again in a future rebuild. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content as it really does help me out. We're very close to 2,000 subscribers already. And I will see you for a double upload week next week.